Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In this tutorial, I'll show you several ways that you can add color to dry embossed images. In the photo tutorial, Jeannie shows a method using ink and paper stumps, so I'll begin with that first. I'm just rolling the end of my stump onto an ink pad to pick up the color. These are Versamagic chalk inks. Then I'll use the flat side of the tip of the stump to carefully rub the color over the raised areas of my embossed leaves. The key to doing this technique successfully is really to work slowly and carefully and to keep the stump or blender pen or brush pen or paintbrush as flat as possible against that raised area of the image. If you work with the tip of the stump or if you work with the tip of the marker, you'll tend to get down into the crevices and outside the outlines and you'll lose the effect of the raised colored image. If you're layering colors, you'll want to work from your lightest color to your darkest color. And if you only have one stump to use, you can use a sanding block to remove the ink from the tip before moving on to another color. You can run the sides of the stump against the sanding block to remove the ink and then pull the stump away from the tip to bring the stump back to a sharp point again. I like the results that I got with the Stampin' Up Blender pen too, so I'll show you that method. Here I'm using distress markers and creating a palette for myself on a ceramic tile. Just scribbling the marker right on there. And then I'll use the blender pen to pick up the ink. Notice that I'm holding the pen really far back from the paper. That allows me to hold that brush tip at a very flat angle and get the broadest surface of the brush against the embossing. The final effect with the blender pen is much more of a watercolored look. So if that's the kind of effect that you enjoy, you might try this technique yourself. If you don't have distress markers, but you have some other water-based markers, you can use those in the same way. You can even drop diary inkers or tap the corner of your ink pad onto a palette like this, and that will work with the blender pen as well. I tried using the distress markers directly onto the embossed image, and that does work too, but it's a little bit difficult to control. Play around with what you have at your house and see what works for you. You can do this technique with alcohol markers, but again, it takes a really steady hand and actually a very light touch to keep the alcohol ink from bleeding into the open areas of the embossing. I'm working on watercolor paper here, so it may be a little bit more absorbent than a smooth cardstock. If that's what you have and you want to give it a try, it can be done. Experiment with what you have and see what works best for you. You can also use a blending pen with your blending chalks or pan pastels just by touching the tip of the blender pen into the chalk and then coloring with the tip as we did before, keeping the brush tip very flat against the embossed image. Here's a closer look at the sample from our photo tutorial. I just really love how the color on this embossed image really brings the detailed embossing to life. And then this is a card that I created using the blender pen and the distress markers with a few added spritzes and splatters of paint and water. I hope you'll share your colored embossing with us too. Thank you so much for watching.